In one of my recent videos, I tried to find out what my own gravity was, and in doing that I modelled the gravity and freefall on the Martian moon of Deimos, and it got me thinking about how freefall would happen on other planets, so let's find out. I make new science videos each week, so if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. I'm going to drop a 5kg bowling ball, and I know mass doesn't matter here, but just for the sake of clarity. This bowling ball's got a diameter of 20cm, and I'm going to be dropping it from a height of 3 meters above the surface. Just for reference, this is how that particular freefall would look here on Earth, and I'll keep the freefall on Earth on one side as a reference. So let's start off nearest the Sun, and work our way out. Here on Mercury, with the Sun large in the sky, Surface gravity is 0.377 Earth Gs. That means that the rate of freefall is 3.7 meters per second squared. So let's have a look at how that would look, and here we go. To drop 3 meters on Earth, a bowling ball would take 0.78 seconds, whereas on Mercury it would take 1.3 seconds. If you weighed 80 kilos here on Earth, on Mercury it would feel like you were only carrying round just over 30 kilos, or 66 pounds. Next up we have Venus. With all the clouds obscuring the view, seeing the Sun would be impossible. Also, our bowling ball wouldn't last very long on the real Venus, but since we're in fantasy land, our bowling ball is indestructible. Venus is very close in size to the Earth, and so surface gravity is 0.904 of Earth gravity. This means that acceleration due to gravity is 8.87 meters per second squared. The freefall of our bowling ball would look something like this, and the drop would last 0.82 seconds. Here I'm going to make things a little bit easier for myself by assuming that there's no air resistance. We know how things fall on Earth, and in 1971, Apollo 15 astronaut David Scott dropped a hammer and a feather at the same time on the moon to show that they would fall at the same rate in an environment without atmosphere. The surface gravity on the moon is 0.165 g's, meaning the rate of acceleration due to gravity would be 1.62 meters per second squared. Dropping a bowling ball on the moon would look something like this, with its descent taking nearly two seconds. Now let us journey to Mars. The surface gravity on Mars is very similar to that on Mercury, being 0.38 of Earth gravity. Or in other words, acceleration due to gravity would be 3.72 meters per second squared. When the bowling ball hits the surface here on Earth, it's travelling at 7.67 metres per second, or 17 miles an hour. Here on Mars, that bowling ball would hit the ground at just 4.7 metres per second. Jupiter next, and here we have a problem. The gas giant planets don't have a surface as we would appreciate the surface of a planet to look like. Instead, surface gravity is calculated at a point in the clouds where the atmospheric pressure is equal to that here on Earth. On Jupiter, at that pressure, the surface gravity is 2.53 times Earth gravity. Acceleration due to gravity would be 24.79 meters per second squared. On Jupiter, if you weighed 80 kilograms here on Earth, it would feel like you weighed 202 kilograms or 445 pounds. The drop of the bowling ball from 3 meters would just take just half a second and the ball will be travelling at 12 metres a second, or 27 miles per hour by the time it hit. The surface gravity on Saturn is very similar to that here on Earth, being 1.065 Earth gravity. That means that acceleration due to gravity would be very similar to here on Earth at 10.44 metres per second squared. On Uranus, the surface gravity is slightly lower than here on Earth, it's 0.886 Earth gravities. Acceleration due to gravity is 8.68 meters per second squared, and the drop of the bowling ball from 3 meters will take 0.83 seconds. Conversely, on Neptune, the surface gravity is slightly higher than here on Earth. Its surface gravity is 1.14 Earth g's, with acceleration due to gravity being 11.17 meters per second squared. Next, on to Pluto, and yes, I'm doing Pluto. This dwarf planet is actually smaller than our moon. I've even made a video about this place. Surface gravity here is 0.063 times Earth gravity. This means that acceleration due to gravity is 0.62 meters per second squared. The drop from 3 meters on Pluto would take our bowling ball 3.12 seconds. There are many, many moons in our solar system, too many to look at them all, 
Well, I'll select a few just to have a look at the surface gravity on. Firstly, let's look at the interesting Jovian moon of Europa. Gravity here is similar, but slightly less than our moon at 0.134 Earth Gs. The acceleration of our bowling ball here would be 1.31 meters per second squared, and the drop from three meters high would take our bowling ball 2.1 seconds. Saturn's moon Enceladus has a diameter of just 252 kilometers. This means that the surface gravity here on Enceladus is a measly 0.0113 times Earth gravity. Acceleration due to gravity would be just 0.113 meters per second squared. Our falling bowling ball would take a whopping 7.4 seconds to hit the floor from a height of three meters. It's impossible for us to land on the sun, of course. It's a little too hot for us there. If it were, however, possible for us to land on the surface of the sun, we'd find the gravity there very uncomfortable. I mean, to be honest, the gravity wouldn't be the biggest of our problems, but let's leave that aside for a minute. On the sun, the surface gravity is 28 times the gravity here on Earth. Our bowling ball would take just 0.15 seconds to travel that three meters, and we'll be traveling at 90 miles an hour by the time it had traveled those three meters. An 80 kilogram person would feel as if they weighed two and a quarter tons. I've already tested the gravity on one of the moons of Mars, Deimos, but what about Phobos, the other moon? Phobos is a little bigger than Deimos, with a diameter averaging 22 and a half kilometers. This means that the surface gravity is only 0.00058 times that of the Earth. Our bowling ball would take 32 seconds to fall 3 meters. The escape velocity here on Earth, that's the speed you need to be going to break free of the Earth's gravity, is about 11 kilometers a second. On Phobos, the escape velocity is just 8 meters per second. In fact, if you jumped straight upwards on Phobos, you'd be able to jump nearly 1.5 kilometers high. The entire jump would take nearly half an hour for you to get back down to solid ground. Before we finish our travels through gravity, let's turn now to a few worlds beyond our solar system. Every week we're discovering more and more exoplanets. These are planets orbiting around suns other than ours. We're learning more and more about these worlds, and that has allowed us to estimate the mass of some of these worlds. One particularly notable solar system, which I've already covered in a previous video, is that of TRAPPIST-1. This star has seven planets, all within the Goldilocks zone. One particular planet of note is TRAPPIST-1d. This has got a temperature very similar to that of Earth. The gravity on TRAPPIST-1d would be 0.48 the gravity of Earth. The bowling ball here would take 1.13 seconds to reach the floor. Finally, to another planet I've already covered in another video, and this time to our closest exoplanet, that of Proxima Centauri b. This planet lies just over four light years away. Estimates of the gravity on this planet vary, but the upper estimate is that Proxima b has a gravity 1.4 times that on Earth. The bowling ball would hit the ground after just 0.66 seconds. If you were 80 kilograms here on Earth, it would feel like you were carrying round 112 kilos or 246 pounds on Proxima b, and this would put considerable strain on your joints. Let's come back home now. Even here on Earth, gravity fluctuates ever so slightly. Since gravity is strongest the closer to the centre of the Earth we go, then the point on the Earth's surface closest to the centre would feel the strongest gravity. The point furthest away from the Earth's centre would feel the weakest gravity. The temptation will be then to think that the top of the highest mountain will be furthest away from the centre, but due to the rotation of the Earth, the planet bulges a little bit across the equator. In addition, the density of the Earth in particular locations varies, and this also has an effect on local gravity fluctuations. This means that the point on the Earth's surface that is furthest away from the centre, and therefore the place with the weakest gravity, is Mount Nevado, Huascaran, in Peru, with a gravity of 9.7639 meters per second squared, or 0.996 g. The place with the highest gravity would be at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean, Gravity here would be 9.8337 meters per second squared, or 1.003 standard g. The difference in our bowling ball drop would be too small for the human eye to discern, but it would be measurable at two thousandths of a second difference in the time between the two bowling balls hitting the ground. 
Well, that's all for our trip around the solar system and beyond, but for now and until next time, thank you very much for watching.